Ah, 20... Oh, his thing's falling off. Oh. He's a fan of Spider God, a neon belly. He saw BJJ in 96 on the telly. A defender of the rule. That there ain't no school like the old school. As you can see from the roll. I have a long way to go. Before I can tap my friend Mario. Hi there, my name's James, and thank you so much for checking my podcast, Dad Mind Matters, helping men to safely navigate family life without losing their minds. This is a podcast where I talk about all things to do with parenting, marriage, and mental health. I set up this podcast because I wanted to create an online community that really supports parents, specifically dads, and specifically dads like myself, who often struggle with their mental health. If that sounds like something you'd like to support, please follow my podcast, or if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, please hit subscribe. In this week's podcast, I talked to a friend of mine about what it was like to learn Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in Sao Paulo, how he thinks Brazilian Jiu Jitsu can help you with your life, how long it took him to get his black belt, and what first appealed to him about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Mario, how long have you been training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Around 25 years. It's been a while. Yeah. Where, where was your first class? My first class was in a small town uh, near Sao Paulo city. It's called Atibaia. That's 1996, so actually, yeah, a little bit more than... Uh, what, time, I guess. Why did you want to start training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? I've always liked martial arts since I was a kid. I started with Judo, which was a very, uh, still very popular martial art in Brazil. And it was like uh, the first martial art of almost every kid, uh, at least in my school and uh, my friends and everything. So. I started with judo and then afterwards I did karate, karate, and then after karate, aikido. And then one day I watched uh, Hoysi Gracie against, uh, you know, in the, uh, one of the first uh, Valitudo fights. And I was like, wow, well, what's this guy, the skinny guy beating everybody up? What is he doing? I was fascinated. And then, then I started training and- How old would he have been? How old would he have been then? Uh, it was the first one, the first, the first fights. That's, if I started in 96, I think it was, what, 94, 95? Back in the day, there was no internet or anything, so you would, you would get all the news at least two years later. So like the UFC stuff? It wasn't UFC, yeah. It was, uh, I don't remember what it was called, but it wasn't, it wasn't the proper, it, or maybe it was UFC, the Octagon and... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the whole thing. And I remember watching it and was like, okay, this is, a, this is a cool martial art and there's Brazilian people doing it, so let's give it a go. And also, uh, I got into a fight which I didn't want to get into, but that's another long story. And during the fight, I saw myself sitting on top of the guy. And that also reinforced the idea of, you know, grappling is, is very efficient if your opponent uh, is not able to knock you out with one blow. Okay. So you take them down and from there, if they don't know what they're doing. And actually my judo years in school came back a little bit because that, that's the thing about martial arts. The difference between you and me is the amount of stuff I do without thinking. The, the muscle memory. So the muscle memory, the, uh, you know, the repetition. And so that's uh, even, even the, the uh, judo stuff uh, that I learned when I was a kid helped me out in the army later on, the rolls and the, uh, the crawling, the whole thing. So, yeah, martial arts is great stuff. And how long have you been coaching? Coaching? At, uh, I, I coached Jiu-Jitsu in New Zealand for three years. So that's back in 2003, when I was a, still a brown belt. And then after that, I was, I was kind of an assistant coach back in Brazil. But, you know, it was, it was just to cover. It was, it was more like... Uh, a, a, what do you call it? Someone in the backup if you, if okay. you, if you need someone, yeah, but yeah. Not, not really a coach. And five years here, actually, because it, uh, uh, my goal was never to be a coach. My goal was to keep fit, to, uh, you know, fight aging and... Which you're definitely doing. Yeah, <laughs> um, well, if you do everything right, you lose at the end anyway, but... Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, and uh, so keep mentally fit because jiu-jitsu keeps your, your brain going as well. It's not only a physical, but also in the brain. Training today, I could see that 
if I don't engage my brain into new things and to explore new, new stuff, um, you, you, you tend to, like in life, you tend to get rigid and, and come up with always the same answer to the same problem, which is uh, not working, but you, you still come up yeah, with the yeah. same answer. So we need, we need to find something else. So Jiu-Jitsu is life, really. This is the beauty of it, and I think this is part of why people get addicted to it. Because it's, uh, it's reality, the way it is, and uh, either you face uh, your challenge, and if, it, if you're, what you're doing is not working, either you, you find uh, uh, a new solution or you lose. Or, or the pressure of life will come hard on you. I think mastering your ego is a big deal, isn't it? Just well, if, exactly. If you, if you don't learn how to tap, your joints will be a heavy price. Yeah. And, and the thing about chokes, whoever's watching it out, out there, uh, tap before you pass out. Because it's not that the more you're, you're choked and the more you pass out, the more uh, resistance you get to it, it's quite the opposite. The more choked and the more you pass out, the easier it is to pass out. Really? Yeah. Why well, is that? Because your body just kind of learns that this is a process I, to I, get me out I of I don't know, but I've seen it happen more than once. And uh, people who get constantly choked, you just need a little choke and they pass out. Yeah, and that's got to be just, you're, you're yeah. not a great relationship with your ego. No. You're, 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 you cannot breathe and, you're, and your head is starting to, even if you can't breathe, but you're, your head is starting to blow and, and get really, you know, the pressure is high because your blood is not going to your brain. It, or it's not going back, uh, tap before you pass. You yeah, know, yeah. That's, uh, that's the thing, right? Can you remember yeah. the, how long it took you to get from white to blue to blue to purple to purple to brown to brown to black? That's a long... Um, from white, white to blue took me... That was the quickest. It was a year and a half. And then from blue to purple was two years. That, that's how it was back in the day. Mm. You wouldn't change belts before two years. You how long get, were you? How, you would get one stripe every six months. And what was the frequency you were training? How many times a I week? I was training three times a week, four times a week. Right. It didn't matter if you trained twice a day, five days a week. You would get a stripe but, every six months. Got it. It didn't matter. As long as you were showing up. Yeah, exactly. And as long as your, your game is improving, you don't expect... Oh, well, you know, if you go to tournaments and you beat everybody up at your belt, then maybe you get two stripes. That's, that's how it was back in the day. Uh, and then from blue to purple, yeah, two years. And then purple to brown, that's when it started to slow down. Because then I went to the U.S., I spent three years in the U.S., so I didn't get any stripes. I didn't get, back in the day, you would only get stripes and belts from your head instructor. Oh, okay, so you had to go in, back in to your... Brazil, in Brazil, ah, if you okay. get, I was a purple belt in the US. If someone else gave me a brown belt and I went back to Brazil with a brown belt, they would say, who gave you a brown, your brown belt? Oh, John Doe. No, so you go train with John Doe. Here, your purple belt. Nobody gave you a brown belt here. That's how it was. Yeah, yeah. So your loyalty to the club. It was very strong because, again, it's, it's from a time where YouTube didn't exist and you're... you're your team's game was your team's game, so you don't show it around, and you just use it in tournaments. So you don't train in other. That, thank, well, you know, things change, and thank God it changed. Now jiu-jitsu has evolved because maybe part of it is, is because of that that everybody exchanged knowledge with everybody. But I like that idea that if before the internet you'd go to a tournament and you'd find you. You'd, you'd fight a different academy, and I suppose their jiu-jitsu is very much what their head coach. Yes, yeah, that's right. And that's where you would see the new moves. That's where you would see, oh, look at what he's doing. Look, look how he's playing that game. Look how he strapped that guy. That's how you would see it. Yeah, yeah. Now you have everything on YouTube. But back in the day, you would need to go and watch a, a tournament. Or someone would have a camera, video camera, and record it. And then one of your friends would say, look, I, I got a tape of uh, so-and-so fighting. And then everybody would go to his home. It was, it was an event, it was, yeah, I bet. It was something, yeah, to, to, to plan for, like a party, right? So everybody on Friday at, at Billy Bob's home, so we're going to watch the fight. And then you would, they would stop, they would play it again, replay and study, and that, that's how it was back in the day. Well, I suppose. So most of what I learned was trial and error, and, and very little thing here and there. Okay. So from purple to brown was... 
Purple to brown was five years, uh, and then brown to black was seven years. Which, uh, which yeah, which is a long time, isn't it? Which it is, is because I travel. I was traveling the world yeah, as well. Yeah. And again, you don't get your black belt unless it's from your instructor. I like that though. I think, and I think something you said about the internet. I think in some ways, there's too much information doesn't actually help you. Certainly at the beginning, when you're you know when you're a white belt, you just need to learn the basics and the fundamentals and yeah well if you're if you're seeing flying arm bars parabolas uh, it's it's probably doing you less help it's doing you I less think, i think it's up to how you want to use the information information i don't think information is is, is never too much is how you use it uh, I, I think it's great that information is out there now if you if you're a beginner and you want to focus on flamboyant and moves that are full of complexity and very hard to happen it's up to you. you you will see that actually other people doing more basic bread and butter solid stuff will evolve faster than you yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you know it's, it's a learning process everyone is different information is out there for you to use the the way you, you find best uh, i according to age as well i try to to keep to to the bread and butter, to the basic, to the old school game. I don't, I don't try Berimbolo stuff. I don't try, you know, too flamboyant <laughs> stuff. Like because, you just, boy, you tapped me four times in the neon belly just there. Yeah, but that's because you, you didn't stop me. Yeah, it's because yeah, yeah. You, you let me do it. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, and that's how you learn to stop. It's being kneed it's, on the belly many times. I've been in your situation with, with heavier guys, with the guys who were better technically than me, that would get me on a knee and a belly and I couldn't, I couldn't escape. And then I started to see how to escape and do yeah, yeah, before yeah. It, it comes and position myself in ways that I wouldn't be tapped. Because uh, we joke, I, but it's, it's kind of, I, you know, it is the one what I, I need to learn because you, that is your, you always know I, how to. I, I like knee on the belly because the knees is, is a narrow thing compared to my chest. So I, I want to get, if I'm passing your guard, I want to get my chest close to your chest, right? Mm. So if, if you're closed, my chest cannot come through, but my knee many times can come through and, yeah, that, yeah. and that's a way in. And I learned to keep knee on the belly, going against the big heavy guys, the guys with big bellies, that they use their, their central of gravity and their, and their weight to roll and just throw you off the mat yeah, yeah, when you're yeah. knee on the belly. And, and I learned how to keep my balance on top of them. And then once you learn with big heavy guys, 120 kilo guys, how to keep your balance on top of them, you learn with, it gets easier when, when they're not 120 kilos. What's one thing you, if you were starting jujitsu tomorrow as a white belt, but with this knowledge you have as a black belt, What's one bit of advice you would give your white belt self about Jiu Jitsu? <laughs> so what I just carry on training, forget about belts. Uh, that's what I heard when I started. Uh, belts are good to tie your gi. That's what they're made for. Uh, get focused and don't stop training. Even if you don't want to, you're going to learn. And why do you think Because my my um, channel is predominantly for dads? Often dads who struggle with the mental health. Why do you think that, that jiu-jitsu, well, Brazilian jiu-jitsu is such a good thing for, for men, maybe middle-aged men who struggle with the mental health? Middle-aged or anybody is what, what I told you, or men or women or whoever, is what, where we started the conversation. If you, uh, if you come up with the same solution to the same problem, the same solution, actually is not a solution, and expecting it, that, that's, I'm not saying anything new. If you expect a different outcome from a, for a problem that you address always the same way, it's it's madness. So, jujitsu shows you that you need to find other ways to solve the problem that has been presented to you. Okay. Get you out of your comfort zone. Move your butt. Move. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. get static and don't don't get narrow vision. And flow. Find the flow. Nice. The hardest thing in jiu-jitsu and that's what i what i try to get is the flow if whoever is watching this if you play a musical instrument or any or, or or work with arts we're talking about martial arts right you have to find the flow 
if you if you're playing guitar, the drums or, or piano, whatever, if you if you think about what you're doing, you're gonna you're not gonna play. There, there's a, there's a mind state or a state of mind that is is in between thinking and 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 reaction. And that that's the flow. That's the hard part to find. That's what I try to find every time I roll, is the flow. And when I'm not flowing, then I get stuck in, in, into one solution for the problem. And that's when I start losing ground in the fight. And that's life. The hard part is the flow, is, 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 is react according to, to what life is presenting you. And again, looking for new solutions. It's like playing jazz, like a solo jazz. It's, it's listening to, to the background, you know, what the drums and the bass and the piano are doing, and you have to solo with the, with the saxophone, for example. You, 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 you're listening, you know where you are, but you're in a state of mind that you can use your technical knowledge, because it's not just going blah, 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 blah. blah. It, it's, there's a technical knowledge that that, well, that, 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 that uh, a musician has because he, he or she has trained uh, played for many years that he can get into that flow and that's the hard part so since I've been doing this longer than you I can get into the flow quicker than you mm. and, and now my challenge is the is age is how age starts to slow you down so I'm trying to get the flow harder than I ever had to because the body needs to respond I've just written a book called First Time Dad that's now available on Amazon. It's a 42 week guide to pregnancy to help dads look after their mental health and help them to support their partners to the best of their ability. If you'd like a completely free digital copy of this book, put your Gmail address in the comments or email me at mydadmissions at gmail.com. All I would ask is that you'd leave a review on Amazon once you've had a chance to take a look at the book. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care. Dad Mind Matters, helping men safely navigate family life without losing their minds. Two podcasts every week on a Monday and a Thursday. Cut. Cut. <laughs>